Magnificent, isn't it? All the drama, mystery of life in that fading light. Easy does it. There we go. Well, Mac, what do you think of my bureaucratic image these days, eh? Yeah, it looks like your cover is finally caught up with your personal lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> the boys in the accounting office won't like it, but then we never did get along. Sally, won't you please sit down? I'm going to mix us something to drink. Yeah. What would you like? Something soft. Something soft. How about uh, orange juice, eh? That'd be great. How about you, Mac? Oh, the usual. Usual. That would be uh, a martini, yeah? Aha. Uh -huh. I know I don't have to tell you this, Mac. It's a funny thing. People attach a certain glamour to this business. Pretty soon, though, the glamour fades and it becomes just a tough job with an element of risk. And after a while, you get used to that. And then you discover that wonder of wonders, you're thoroughly jaded. You realize there isn't a single decent human being on the face of this earth. Except maybe the guy next to you when you need him. The next thing you know, 20 years go by, and you make another discovery. You're a professional schizophrenic. You start dividing yourself into reality and fantasy. And reality is what you've come to accept as life. Fantasy is what you suddenly long to escape to. And you know what it is you want to escape to? What everybody else calls normal. More than anything else in the world, you want to be normal. Because it finally hits you that you're lonely. Thank you. Nostrovia. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Well, Mac, I know you didn't come down here with the sunset. And I don't think we're hiding anything from Sally now, so uh, tell me. What's on your mind, huh? Straight? Yeah, sure, straight. You've been holding out on me, Walt. Oh? I knew it the other day, but that was your prerogative then. You didn't need me. But that's changed. That's changed. You must hold an interesting hand. I've got the cards. Such as? Such as I know that Carmichael was killed by one of your people. That's very good, Mac. But then you were always good at that sort of thing. How do I know you're not bluffing? We've withheld information from each other, Walt, but we've never lied to each other. All right. I'll make a deal with you. But you have to promise me one thing first. You help me bring in the killer. You've got it. All right. Let's start with Carmichael. Well, he came to me with a deal. About on a par with your deal, Mac. There he was all of a sudden. Many years, dead and buried Carmichael, standing there with that crazy Carl Reese face, telling me he was an enemy agent these days. Been drilling holes in the homeland for the past six and a half years. But now he wanted out of it. He was through taking sides, and he thought maybe I could help him. Fix him up with a quarter of a million dollars and some new ID. And in return, he'd give me a piece of information he'd picked up from one of his new colleagues. The name of the sleeper in my outfit. Sleeper? That's exactly the way it hit me. Well, what did you say to him? I told him I needed time, and I did. I don't carry that kind of money around in petty cash. I went through Washington. By the time they got back to me, Carmichael was dead. Will somebody please explain to me what a sleeper is? An enemy agent planted in an alien country long before he starts functioning as an agent. It happens all the time, Sally. A man emigrates to a new country when he's in his 20s, becomes a citizen, gets a government job, works his way up. By the time he's 35 or 40, he has access to valuable information. Well, that's incredible. The Washington decided, by the way. They approve the deal? Mm. You know, Mac, a big chunk of me was rooting for Carmichael. He was a guy caught in the middle, saw a way out. Got to give him points, Mac. He did see a way out. Well, he had to see a way out. He was a man that was in love. But he didn't make it. Somebody killed him. Somebody tried to kill Laura, too, by the way. Well, she's all right. I've got her. OK, man. It's your turn.
Keystone. Don't play games with me, Mac. I'm not. That's crazy. Where'd you get that? Looks like Carmichael got to me after all. Let's call it a legacy. Keystone. I'd have gone along with Santa Claus first. Look, Mac, I'm going to ask you to call off the deal. Let it ride, the whole thing. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that, Walt. I can't do it. Come on, Mac, come on. Think of what I could do with this situation. I could pull the strings on him. Sure. He thinks he got away with killing Carmichael and continues to operate as your keystone. And you just sit back quietly, milking out his contacts. But you forgot one thing, Walt. Laura. Keystone thinks she knows too much. He'll keep after her. Mac, Laura's no problem. We'll wall her up someplace. The East Coast, if you like. I'll pick up the tab. You can't just shuffle people around like canned goods, Walt. And I can't just write off a murder. And that's it? That's it. I guess I'll have to live with it. How do we take him? I'll set something up. Call you. What's his name? Cushing. Cushing? Yeah, you saw him the other day, but don't let his looks fool you. He's sharp. Not as sharp as my old Keystone, though. I'll bet you didn't know that. taking a taxi home. I have a couple of things I better take care of first. No, I don't mind. Are you sure you wouldn't like some company? It's official business. I'll see you later. What do you want?
<laughs> Your official business sure didn't take very long. My official business turned out to be a wild goose chase. Don't get yourself comfortable. Walt Harmon called. Oh, Your no. meeting is tonight. Oh. Mac, hmm? I don't like this Cushing. He's got me worried. I didn't like his face from the start. Well, there won't be any trouble. What time? Nine o'clock at the Roller Bowl. Now, why would he want to meet you at a Roller Bowl? Maybe he likes to skate. Enright, me. Tell me something. Been roller skating lately? waiting for me. We've used this place a couple of times for a drop, so he should be pretty tame. I know it's short notice, Mac, but it's better tonight. Meaning you want to get it over with? Let's skip the analysis, okay, Mac? I got him here. I'm not going to take him. I don't want you to. It's my job. It wasn't you, Mac. But he was somebody to talk to. You know something? He was so stiff, I almost got to like him. I don't like him anymore. He's yours. Watch yourself. Want. Um, a root beer. How much is it? Signs over there.
to put out an APB, sir. No. Security again? Something like that. You all right? And I thought you weren't getting involved. Commissioner, this is the man that saved your life. Wouldn't be the first time. You better get inside and do some explaining. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I figured I'd better come back. He's got this damn sixth sense. Well, I've gone this far, Mac. I'll go the rest of the way. And don't give me any more Boy Scout talk about working together. You don't know where to look. I do. I'll bring him in. But it's got to be my way. Yes? Off the range, Miss Rainey. Everything all right in there? Yes, thank you. Mr. Ames, it must be awfully boring out there. Would you like to come in and play some cards? Well, uh... I don't, I, I don't know. I, I shouldn't, really. It'd be a good way to keep an eye on me. I guess it is at that. What happened? Well, how do you know anything happened? I hmm? talked to Sergeant Enright. He got away, didn't he? For the moment. Ten o'clock, and all's well. Macmillan residence, Mildred speaking. Uh, uh, yeah, if you'll hold on a minute, I'll see if he's here. We've got a world champion heavy breather on the phone. He wants to talk to you. Who is it? I don't know. He didn't breathe his name. Macmillan. My name's Cushing. I think maybe we better meet and straighten out a couple of things. Well, I suppose I could. What's the matter with right? Cushing wants me to meet him at the airport at 11 o'clock. Well, you're not going to go. Uh, it could be a trap. He just tried to kill you at the roller rink. Cushing is supposed to be sharp. Now, he wouldn't call me out in the open like that. That's amateur night. Why else would he call you? What could he be trying to tell you? Unless he's trying to distract me. Distract you from what? Laura. Well, this is ridiculous. She's got to be there, Mac. Anybody for a three-handed game of poker? Well, what about a one-handed game of poker, beautiful? you do something like that? I was protecting her. Laura? Yes, ma'am. Go on. Well, uh, we, we were playing cards. Oh, you know how it is, Commissioner. I, I guess she got a little lonely being cooped up in here. Well, uh, anyway, she said uh, she, she was going to get a cold drink out of the refrigerator. Asked me if I wanted something. I said, uh, no thanks. And she gets up, goes past me, and Bang, that was it. Went out like a light. Well, I'll be. What? 
I just realized something, Commissioner. She hit me with her hand. Are you sure? Yes, sir, I'm sure. I couldn't in this world tell you why. Well, something must have happened to make her do it. Something you said or did. Well, I don't know what it could be. We were only playing gin. I'd already lost a dollar thirty seven. All right, all right, all right. Let's start from the beginning. Well, uh, I came on duty at eight. That's mm -hmm. when Davenport goes off. About nine or so, I knocked on the door, checked to see if everything was okay. Well, she must have been kind of lonely. Asked me to play some cards. Well, I, I didn't see any harm in that, Commissioner. So, you know, we sat down and started to play. We must have been at it for about an hour. Uh, then she gets up and clobbers me, just like that. Nothing else happened? What did you talk about? Well, I guess I did most of the talking. I, I told her about my two boys in college. I talked a little bit about being a ham operator. You know, things like that. So you just sat there and talked and played cards, and that's it? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, I, there, there was a call. Uh, a friend of hers. It didn't last more than a minute. What did she say, exactly? Well, a uh, phone rang. Uh, hello? Joanne, I think. Uh, yes, I'm still here. I'm playing cards with this very nice policeman. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Then she hung up. About five minutes later, she goes into this karate act. What time did this call come in? Try to pin it down. Uh, I'd have to say just after 10, Commissioner. A few minutes after 10. I hope you're not too comfortable. Uh, not really, sir. Good, then you don't mind meeting me at the airport in 30 minutes. Are you sure I'm not disturbing you? Not at all, sir. I'll be right there. Well, you know more than I do. Uh, why are we going to the airport, after all? We're working on the assumption that Laura is a helpless little pawn in the situation, right? Well, I'll give you this. She's a lot of things. Helpless she ain't. What if Laura isn't who she says she is? Then the phone call makes some sense. It does? Not to me. Laura got her call a few minutes after 10, is that right? Yeah. Hmm? What time did Cushing call me at the apartment? I don't know. Ten o'clock, and all's well. Mildred! That's when she answered the phone. And a few minutes after that, Laura gets a call from a friend. And a few minutes after that, Laura slugs poor Ames over the head, and she gets out of there. Why? Because somebody told her to. Told her that Cushing was going to be at the airport. What, what does Laura have to do with Cushing? And besides, how could anybody know what Cushing was telling you over our phone? Unless our phone's been bugged. That doesn't make any sense. It's all crazy. Not if Laura's the sleeper. Laura? 
Laura is an agent? Laura, or whatever her name is, finds out that Carmichael made a deal with Walt Harmon, the name of the sleeper in exchange for a new life. That means she has to kill Carmichael to shut him up. Then she establishes herself as Carmichael's girlfriend. She puts her own picture in Carmichael's apartment. Mm -hmm. And the receipt for the leather carry-all. The final touch was that fake attempt on her life. That set me up for the safety deposit box. With Cushing's name on it. She made Cushing her patsy. The moment I opened that envelope, Walt Harmon and I were on the trail of the wrong sleeper. I think Cushing's on to her. I think that's what he wants to tell me at the airport. That is a fascinating theory. The only thing is, if Cushing isn't the sleeper, then why did he try to kill you? Because he thought I was trying to kill him. Huh. Where does that man with the hat fit in? I don't know yet. But he's got to be in on with Laura. I'll bet you he fired that shot into her apartment. The man with the hat? Mm -hmm. And if I'm right, he's also the guy who tapped our phone. And if I'm right, Laura and the man with the hat are on their way to the airport. If you're wrong? The action's still at the airport. I want you to stay right here and catch Enright when he comes in. I'll pick him up later. Where are you gonna go? Find Cushing.
another one, sir. Keep looking. This gun wasn't fired. Do you think I killed him? No. Someone else got there first. But I wanted to kill him. More than anything in this world, I wanted to kill him. All right, then. If it wasn't you, it was your partner. You're under arrest for the murder of Carl Reese. Carl? You're arresting me for Carl's murder. I loved Carl. That's the man who killed Carl. He was trying to get out of the country. That's what I'm doing here tonight. Carl and I were on opposite sides of the fence. I started out deceiving him, but I ended up loving him.
about your fireball. It's empty, isn't it? Might as well head it over. Yeah. Might as well. I'm sorry, Walt. I know that, Mac. Damn, but you're good. I didn't think you'd catch on. The truth is, I didn't catch on. Until now. You're the sleeper. Never found you if I hadn't found this. It's brand new, Walt. It couldn't belong to the guy I thought I was chasing. <laughs> His name's Tanner. He works for the agency, too. Looks like Washington was on to me, Mac. They sent him out to Bird Dog. And talk about your new stamped out models. That is one hell of a clumsy boy. <laughs> he couldn't even figure out where I fit in. He put a tail on me. <laughs> Carmichael was blackmailing you, wasn't he? Yeah. He'd found out who I was. He wanted me to provide him with a quarter of a million dollars and a new identity, or he'd feed me to Washington. Mm. What about Laura? How does she fit in? Well, she worked in my section back in Washington. And while Carmichael was waiting for me to come up with the money, I played Cupid. Worked like a charm. Carmichael should have known better, but he fell in love. And of course, I was figuring on knocking him off through Laura. Didn't work that way. No. She fell in love with him. Yeah. And when I found that out, I had to come up with a whole new approach. And then you came into the picture. Now I had to move fast, right? So you made Cushing the sleeper. Mm -hmm. And you told Laura he killed Carmichael. Yeah. She was ready to go after him with her bare hands. I told her we couldn't play it that way. You know. After all, we had a police commissioner to satisfy, and we had to keep a low profile for the agency. So you had to set the stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You fired that shot into Laura's apartment, didn't you? You had Laura hand over the safety deposit key. All roads leading to Cushing. And I was supposed to kill him at the roller bowl, wasn't I? <laughs> Who would have put an end to it, Mac? And if I hadn't missed him, you know something, Mac? I'm getting old. No. You wouldn't have fired with all those people in the way, so he escaped. Now you had to come up with another twist. I didn't have any more twists until he called you. Because by this time, he didn't trust me. He never saw who shot him at the roller bowl, but he was beginning to get a whiff. And after all, I sent him there, right? He knew somebody was after him. He thought it was you. So he had to get somewhere safe. But first he had to call me. What he didn't know was that you had my phone tapped. And when you found out he was going to be at the airport, he called Laura. He told her that her lover's murderer was escaping. Yeah, but she lost him. I had to do it myself. It almost worked. It was a little improvised, but it almost worked. You see, I didn't count on you to figure that tap. I was smart, Mac. Then you took it one step further. You figured somebody would be using Cushing's ticket and passport. Smart. I had expert training. <laughs> I'm tired, Mac. Tired of playing games. Comes a time when you just get tired. Well, at least I finished it right, eh? First class. Yeah, you always go first class. No, don't worry about it.
tonight. I'm just as graceless as poor old Carmichael was when he got caught. I threw the cyanide away months ago. You know how tired I really am, Mac? I couldn't even kill you. organization is more than a little interested in your activities. Thanks for the warning. Mac? Hmm? You know, I've been thinking. Walt Harmon was an enemy agent, but he was a good friend, too. You know, people don't think of spies as human beings, but they are. I guess it's just a weakness that they can't help. Or a strength. I always thought of it as such a glamorous world. But Walt was right, it's not. You made the right decision. What's that? Getting out of the agency. Being a spy is dirty, dangerous business. I'm just glad you went into police work instead. 